Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 15. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with independent game development. In this episode we're going to work on movement for our slimes, and we're going to switch from over to use the new coordinate system from the last episode. So let's take a look at what we did last time just to get started. So if we run the game, we see that now we can sort of move forwards and backwards, left and right, and our player moves in a way which lines up with our artwork. So if we want to move sort of backwards on the screen, we move at a 45 degree diagonal. Uh, this episode we're going to make our slimes actually follow our player again, and also take advantage of uh, some of the things using a 2.5D coordinate system uh, lets you do when you make a game. So let's quickly just take a look at uh, how we translate between our coordinates. So if we take a look at our entity class, we can see that now whenever we update the entity, we set the draw position of that entity, uh, screen or draw x and draw y, um, based on this function call to our vector module. And what this does is exactly as it says, world to screen, it translates our 3D world position to a 2D screen position. So it sort of says, if this is where I am in 3D space, where should I be drawn in 2D space uh, in the projection that we are using? And if you want to know more about projections, you can look at the uh, video last time. I gave a quick introduction, but you don't, you don't need to know too much uh, to take advantage of it. All we really need to know is, if we just look inside of our vector class here, is to move between our drawing positions and our um, 3D positions, we use these two equations. We just take the 3D x position and we add the z position times math cos of theta, and theta is just the angle at which uh, we want to move forwards and backwards. So, in our, well, forwards and backwards along our z axis. And in this case it's 45 degrees because that's the angle we're using in our tiles. So that's just to make sure our player lines up with our artwork properly. And for our y value we just times the z by the uh, by math.sine theta rather than cos theta. So what you can think of what we're doing, if you think about a, a 2D screen, we can only really position things in the x and y position. But we have three pieces of information, we have x, y, and z. So what we do is we share the z value out between um, between the x and y values, and thus this gives us kind of the illusion of uh, the illusion of depth. And that's what we want to do. So let's apply all of this to our slime movement as well. And we're going to start off by adding another debug feature. So just a reminder that we have this debug flag now. Um, which we can use to just draw, well, draw debug information. Um, let's just... Where are we? Yep, in our entity class. Let's go ahead and when we draw our entity, we're also going to draw our x, y, and z position of that entity. So let's go ahead and do view in context. We'll pass in a drawing function. And what we want to do here is go ahead and do love.graphics.print and uh, let's pull out a private function called position string and then we will print our uh, x, y, and z positions uh, next to our draw x and draw y. So what this will do is it will draw where the entity is in 3D space next to the entity on the screen. So let's create our position string function. Pass in self here. So it would be a good idea if we actually uh, gave it some arguments down here. So self. And what we'll do is we'll return oops, equals function. There we go. Uh, we will return self.x, uh, we'll join a comma onto that, then we'll do self.y, another comma, self.z. Just a reminder that to stick strings together in Lua we use the two dots uh, notation here. 
and just so that these draw nicely we're going to go ahead and floor these values and if you remember when we uh, used this last time uh, what floor does is it just knocks off the decimal point so uh, rather than having sort of really long um, yeah really long floating point numbers on the screen we will just have uh, short integer numbers because this re is really just to give us an idea of where something is on the screen and finally we will do oops, if we're in debug mode then we want to draw the x y and z positions Okay, let's uh, try that. Great, so now we can uh, see exactly where our player is in 3D space. And one thing to notice is that for some reason our player has a Y value of 50. Well, this is actually left over from uh, when our coordinate system was slightly different, but we actually want our player to start off at Y equals zero because that is the floor. So at the moment, um, although we can't really tell because we don't have anything else that uses a uh, Y location yet, um, our player is kind of floating uh, in midair as far as our coordinate system is concerned. So let's go ahead and fix that um, by going into main.lua where we create our player and we'll just set our y value to zero and let's also set our z value to uh, something sensible as well let's try that aha if we do that we are we start stuck in a wall so let's um say 100 instead there we go and this also means that the room start and room end values which we added last time um, are going to have to change so let's just grab new values for them now so 80140 looks good for our room start where are we entrance x is 80 and y is oh sorry z uh, that's the important difference is 140 so now when we move in to a new room we should uh, start in that location oops 80 140 no that did not feel right at all okay minus 80 my mistake my mistake um, and while we're here let's grab the uh, the exit value as well because if we move backwards at the moment we'll see that we uh, get stuck in a wall because we changed that Y value so let's and at the same time actually let's just up the speed of our player there we go so we can stick to 140 and let's do uh, 275 seems good so back in room.lua this needed to be minus 80 this needed to be 275 and this needed to be uh, that can stay at 140 I think let's just try okay that feels okay and that feels okay there we go Okay, so now we should actually probably before we do anything else, let's do the same thing for our slimes. Let's make sure they also start at y equals zero because we're now moving them over to use our x, y, and z positions in 3D space. And we can see at the moment we just pass in an x and a y position. So let's make sure we use a z position for them as well. and we create our slimes in map.lua so I'll just close a couple of tabs keep things neat and map.lua create room so whenever we create a new room we also create our slimes so let's pass in a z position for them as well and let's make sure they start at y equals zero Okay, um, the other thing we should fix just taking a look at this code is um, 
we currently draw, or there's a chance that we draw our slimes off screen because we uh, pick a x position and this should be a z position now. There we go, z position uh, between 0 and 800 and 0 and 600. So let's uh, choose something that will definitely be inside of a walkable area of our room. So uh, this will give us a value between 100 and 200. So we take 100 and we add a random number between 0 and 100. And, or possibly 1 and 100 actually, uh, but either way. And here let's just do a value between 50 and, uh, uh, one, sorry, 100 and 150. So now, there we go, our slimes start in a walkable area. Okay, now let's make them actually follow our player again. So if we take a look at follow player, uh, and this is inside of uh, logic AI movement follow player, we have all of these movement strategies. Let's take a look. So just reading through the code here, we get the player's position and the entity's position. We get the distance between those two positions and if it is bigger than 10, uh, we add the unit vector um, in the direction of the player to the entity's position. So this will move the entity towards the player, um, sort of a unit of one, and then we can just times that by the speed to move them as far as we like. Um, so this needs to change because uh, we now use X and Z. So X and Z, you can think of X and Z as describing where we are on the floor of the game, and most of the time we can actually ignore our Y value, which is whether we are on the floor or in the air somewhere above the floor. So let's change this to use Z, and uh, also in our vectors we should change those to use Z as well. So let's go ahead, open up our vector.lua class, and for both our distance and normalize functions we now care about X and Z rather than X and Y. Z, 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 and return DZ, which will just be DZ divided by distance now. Okay. Let's uh, give this a go and see what happens. Okay, we now see that our slimes follow our player, and as we move left, right, and backwards and forwards, they follow pretty well. One thing we should do is inside of follow player we say if distance is greater than 10 but I'm actually going to lower this now to be 1 and um, that's just uh, so that our slimes actually land on top of us when they reach us. That uh, feels a bit nicer. Okay, so now let's actually show off um, why we've gone to all the effort of, uh, of doing this by reintroducing bouncing into our game. And the way we're going to do this is let's go into our movement folder here and let's create a new file called bounce after player. Then uh, let's just create a new table and make sure we return it because what we are going to do is create a new movement strategy. So that means to match up with our other movement strategies, uh, this just needs to have a update method which takes uh, an entity and the game state. So let's make sure we have our update method which takes the entity and the game state. There we go. And what we can actually do now is rather than writing a whole load of new code, we can pull in our follow player code. So we'll just require source, oops, source logic AI movement follow player. And we'll also pull in our bounce movement strategy, which we haven't used in a while. Let's fix that typo as well. Require, oops. Source logic AI movement bounce. And now in bounce after player, we can just call follow player.update. 
pass in our entity and our game and then also bounce.update and we can combine our two movement strategies into a single strategy so let's make sure that our slime is using that bounce after player is um, in bounce after player there we go and let's just make sure we use it down there now we're going to need to change our bounce code in order um, in order to line up with our new coordinates but let's just see what happens if we run our game at the moment okay so we see that at the moment our slimes um, they do our best or they do their best to uh, follow us but they're also getting thrown around um, in the z-axis actually which makes sense because if we look at our bouncing code again let's close these bounce.lua we can see that bounce currently um, moves us up and down in the z-axis and we now want to move in the y-axis because um, you know and I think I've said it enough by now we've changed our coordinate system so let's just remind ourselves what this does uh, if the entity doesn't have a bounce direction we create a bounce direction on the entity and we set it to 1 then if uh, the entity's position in the z-axis is greater than the bounce height then we set the bounce direction to be negative uh, if it is less than zero then we set the bounce direction to be positive and then we times or we increase the entity's z position by the speed times two times the bounce direction so if the entity is bouncing upwards they have a positive bounce direction at the moment um, and if they're moving downwards they have a negative bounce direction so the first thing we need to do is change this to use the y-axis because we now bounce in the y-axis and at the same time so bounce height is just a function which gives us a different bounce height depending on how close we are to the player if we are uh, less than 100 uh, units or whatever from the player we uh, bounce higher um, if we're further away we bounce lower so let's see what this does okay we can see that our slimes are sort of disappearing and I'm not sure if they're going to come back oh wait they are going to come back okay so they seem to be bouncing way too far and in the wrong direction so the first thing we'll do is let's just lower these values and uh, this is mostly because we've scaled our graphics since we wrote this so the first time we wrote this we had uh, more pixels to play with but now because we have less okay we can see it's almost working but we're bouncing in the wrong direction and this is because our y-axis is actually inverted so it means uh, the higher you get the uh, higher you or the the less y value you have to go up you need to reduce the y-axis rather than increase the y-axis and uh, that's just a quirk of how we've set up the coordinate system and how love uh, does its drawing as well so we need to flip some of these checks here so now instead of saying if our y value is greater than bounce height because we need to decrease our bounce so uh, let's do things in the right order okay okay so first of all we're going to decrease our y value instead of increase and then uh, we see that our slimes just fly away into space so the next thing we need to do is look at the uh, these two lines here so what we really need to say now is if entity.y is less than negative bounce height because we're now decreasing our y value so if this is less than minus one times bounce height and we don't need the brackets here but I'm just going to add them because uh, I just think it makes it easier to read we know that this check is on all of this uh, this value here so if this is less than our negative bounce height then we want to use minus one 
and then we want to say if we are greater than zero then we want to use positive one now let's see what happens great and the other thing to do we can now see that our slimes uh, happily bounce after us and if they are uh, closer then they bounce higher the other thing to do is to introduce the idea of delta time to both of these functions. So inside of follow player, let's go ahead and just times everything by game.dt, uh, like we did in the last episode with the player's movement. And in bounce as well, let's times this by game.dt. And what this means is we will need to increase the speed of our slime to be in terms of how far we want them to move a second. So let's say um, let's say we want them to move four tiles a second. That will be 16, I think. Oh no, sorry, that will be two tiles a second. So maybe let's make them move a tiny bit faster. Um, hmm, let's say... 32. Cool. There we have it. So in the next episode we will uh, further work on our slimes so that they cannot walk in front of the wall. Um, but I guess the thing to the thing to note is that we now have um, some nice three-dimensional movement. We can see that our slimes sort of bounce forwards, backwards, and left and right based on wherever we go. And yeah, in the next episode, once we add in the collision checking, we'll really see the reason why we've moved to uh, why we've moved to this coordinate system. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been useful. Remember to like and subscribe. It really does help out a lot. And I shall see you next time. Bye for now.